Now that we have created the smart contract, deployed it to our local test blockchain and confirmed we can interact with via the console, it's time to create a UI. The patch or truffle box includes the code for the app's frontend. The code exists within a source directory. The frontend doesn't use a build system to be as easy as possible to get started. The structure of the app is already there and we will be filling in the functions which are unique to Ethereum. This way, you can take this knowledge and apply it to your front end development. Now we will open source.js app.js in the text editor. Examine the file. Note that there is a global app object to manage our application. Load in the pad data in init function and then call the function init web3. The web3 JavaScript library interacts with this Ethereum blockchain and it can retrieve user accounts and transaction, interact with small contracts and more. Remove the multi-line comment within init web3 method and write the following. We check if we are using modern tab browser on the more recent version of MetaMask where an Ethereum provider is injected into the Windows object. If so, we use it to create our Web3 object. But we also need to explicitly request access to the accounts with the Ethereum.enable. If the Ethereum object does not exist, we then check for an injected Web3 instance. If it exists, this indicates that we are using an older DAP browser. If so, we get its provider and use it to create our Web3 object. If no injected Web3 instance is present, we create our Web3 object based on our local provider. This fallback is fine for development environments, but insecure and not suitable for production. Now that we can interact with Ethereum via Web3, we need to instantiate our smart contract so Web3 knows where to find it and how it works. Truffle has a library to help with this called Truffle Contract. It keeps information about the contract in sync with migrations, so you don't need to change the contract's deployed address manually. So in this app.js class, we are going to remove the multi-line comment within the init contract function and write the following. We first retrieve the artifact file for our smart contract. Artifacts are the information about our contract, such as it deployed address and application binary interface. And this application binary interface is a JavaScript object defining how to interact with the contract, including its variable functions and their parameters. Once we have the artifacts in our callback, we pass them to truffle contract method. This creates an instance of the contract we can interact with. With our contract instantiated, as we set its Web3 provider using the app.web3 provider value we stored earlier when setting up the Web3. We then call the Web3 mark adopted function in case any pets are already adopted from a previous visit. We have encapsulated this in a separate function since we need to update the UI anytime we make a change to the smart contract data. Now we have to remove the multi-line comments from mark adopted and write the following. We access the deployed adoption contract, then call get adopters on that instance. We first declare the variable adoption instance outside the smart contract calls. So we can access the instance after initially retrieving it. Using call method allows us to read data from the blockchain without having to send a full transaction, meaning we won't have to spend any ether. After calling get adopters, we then loop through all of them, checking to see if the address is stored for each pet. Since the array contains address types, 
Ethereum initializes the array with 16 empty addresses. This is why we check for an empty address string rather than null or any other falsy value. Once a pet ID with a corresponding address is found, we disable its adopt button and change the button text to success, so the user gets some feedback. Any errors are logged to the console. Now we have to work on handle adopt function and write the following code. We use web3 to get the user account in the callback after an error check. We then select the first account. From there we get the deployed contract as we did above and store the instance in adoption instance. This time through we are going to send a transaction instead of a call. Transaction required a from address and have an associated cost. This cost pays in Ether is called gas. The gas cost is the fees for performing computation and to store data in a smart contract. We send the transaction by executing the adopt function with both the pets ID and the object contain the account address, which we stored earlier in account. The result of sending a transaction is the transaction object. If there are no errors, we proceed to call our mark adopted function to sync the UI with our newly stored data. 